from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lion suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days, that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are towards the righteous and his ears towards their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of the servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. <coughs> Like, like I mentioned before I read this, every time that I start worshiping and praising God and singing songs to him, and I go into that moment of fellowship with him, just the two of us, everything that before I was having trouble doing, I can do instantaneously. So... What do I want you to get out of this? I just encourage you to, that any time that you feel, no, I don't want to do this, start worshiping. And you'll be able to do it. Because he, he, we can do everything through him. Anyone has anything that you want to share? I hear Izzy has something she wants to say. <laughs> Any prayer requests? Sitting calm, she uh, she's facing. It seems like allergies, and she's never had allergies before. I don't know what's going on with the atmosphere, but just need for her to get totally healed and, and uh, find whatever this is that's trying to rise and close her head up. I also.
also I would like to lift up one of my coworkers. Her name is Karen. Uh, about three or four months ago, her dad passed away, and Monday she found out that her mom has colon cancer. <coughs> so they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do as far as uh, treating it. But let's just declare that her mom's going to be completely healed, and she's not going to have to go through any of that. And my coworker doesn't have to go through the loss of the other parent that she yeah. had. So, go ahead. All right, well, let's stand. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you. send them to you so that you can be magnified in their lives. That your promises are fulfilled in our lives and the lives of those that we just presented. That those that are lost in the world, Father, will come to you. They can also enjoy the things that we are enjoying. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Thank you, Lord. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease and germ and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Thank you. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Thank you, Lord. The Lord reviews and devour for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Well, John's not here. Would you mind taking the offering? Let's do a little role reversal.
Let's worship. Do we have any volunteers for the slides? I think Allison can do it. You able to, Allison? <coughs> Santiago. all about you, Lord.
Say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. Lord. Nothing's worth anything if you don't have to fight for it. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the Lord. Glory, glory, Amen. Glory. It's all good in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Amen. For pressing right on in there. Thank you, God. Pressing right on in. Good. It's good. There is no free lunch. Hallelujah. Grace is as close as you're going to get. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we'll, uh, am I on or not? Yes, I am now. Praise God. All right. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's uh, let's get right to this. Amen. Some of the, some of the schools already started. Did you, did you guys already went back? Amen. Poor kids. Praise God. Summer just got started. It seems like, and they've yanked it right out from under them. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Let's let's begin with uh, Revelation chapter three. And we'll read uh, verses 14 through 22. God bless all of you for being here. Appreciate it. I know it's not easy in the middle of the week, obviously. Praise God. Okay, Revelation chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Praise the Lord. All right, let's uh, turn then to Colossians chapter 1, and we'll just read verses 9 and 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. He's talking about in uh, Revelation there, the unwise church. Which is the period that we have lived in. Yeah. Praise the Lord, and possibly all have, but I, I'm just talking about us. Amen. So let's look at the, then Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. I know some pretty lengthy scriptures here, but I want us to get understand what uh, what I feel like the Spirit is saying. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Familiar scripture has been preached about from every possible way imaginable, I guess. But. <clears throat> then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. 
While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet him. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, first things first, these virgins are not the church. They are the bridesmaids of the church. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Praise the Lord. If you follow the actual context in which this is being taught, they didn't have oil in their lamps. They didn't ask the Spirit to guide them. Now listen carefully to what I'm saying because this is all we've been talking about here for a few weeks now. Uh, it came up during uh, Eastgate uh, House of Prayer, came up before that. Uh, Suzanne mentioned talking about the river. Roberto has, has quoted from scripture and read scripture about it and com commented on it. So this is in the mind, I believe, in the mind of the spirit right now and has been for a while and, and bringing us all into some sense of uh, agreement and understanding. But see, they, these people had no oil in their lamps. They didn't ask for spiritual guidance. In other words, that's what the, the oil represents, obviously, the Holy Spirit, right? They had the wisdom of the world, but they didn't seek the wisdom of God. Amen? They were foolish. They had every opportunity, but they didn't take advantage of it. All right? So let's look at Colossians 1.9 here again, just quickly. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, sense knowledge comes from experience and experiments. Amen? Mm -hmm. it, it's never perfect. It can't be perfect because it comes through human senses. And so it always has an element of limitation because of that. It, there's always a chance of mistakes. Yep. Because this knowledge comes through the senses. Right. Our senses trick us. Yep. We think we see things we don't see. We think we heard things we didn't hear. We feel things we shouldn't be feeling and don't feel things we should be feeling. You know what I'm saying? Right. We smell things. I, I mean, you know, sometimes it's what we smell and sometimes we just think it's what we smell. You know, I mean, it's something altogether different. Praise the Lord. Our, 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 in other words, our senses can, be, can deceive us. Yeah. And even, with, even when we're trying to be honest, they're not accurate. They're not always accurate because they're stuck in humanity. Mm -hmm. Amen? So here, the word that is used in Paul's prayer is translated by Thayer. And I just looked this up again. I, I have a uh, Thayer's commentary and a, and a uh, Young's uh, concordance, both of those, plus the, the uh, Greek, Hebrew interlinear, which relates to all those, plus the, 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 just your regular uh, concordance. But that word that's used there in Paul's prayer is translated by Thayer, correct or precise knowledge. And Young's defines it or, or uh, gives the definition of it as being full knowledge. Well, when I looked it up back there in the, the uh, expository uh, or extended version of that, which, which gives you every single Greek and Hebrew word, uh, whether it's a, a, a synonym for, for those words, but it actually the word is epignosis, and it means complete comprehension, or more exact, or exact, or full knowledge. And it goes on to say a, a, a discernment and recognition. 
and thereby giving a greater participation by the knower. So God, he's, Paul's not just saying, I'm praying that you'll get smarter. He's praying that we will have exact knowledge, God knowledge, because the result of that knowledge increases our participation in what God wants to do. Right. You can understand that just from a natural perspective. You, you can only do as much as you understand. So the more you know about God, the more you understand God, the greater your knowledge, the more accurate and exact your knowledge is, the fuller your knowledge, the greater capacity you have to act on that knowledge. Amen? In other words, to move in the Spirit, to operate by the Spirit. Everything else is just religion anyway. Everything else is just human effort, and it's not all bad. It just can't produce anything more than what humans can produce. Amen? So he's trying to give us precise, accurate, full, complete knowledge. So Paul prays then that we be filled with the exact, precise, full knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a big, that's a tall order. Mm -hmm. That's a huge prayer. But the Spirit doesn't suggest, and Paul was being led by the Spirit in order to pray this prayer, and the Spirit never suggests possibilities that are not attainable. Right. If the Spirit moves you to do something, it's because you can do it. Right. Amen. If, if you're motivated to think thoughts in a certain way, it's because the Spirit is moving you to that, mm -hmm. and it's possible for you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He doesn't. See, if Paul prayed that the believers in Colossus should have this kind of knowledge, then it's possible to have this kind of knowledge. Amen. Not just for them, but for everybody. This is written for everybody. Right. And so I'm saying we need to get a bigger vision, a greater understanding of what God has wanting for us and what we can actually have. This is not unattainable. This isn't something that only some, uh, you, know, uh, you know, spiritual freak is going to get. Right. This is something that is attainable for every one of us. And just because we've been uh, ignorant, amen, or uh, unwise, doesn't mean we have to stay that way. Right. Just because he describes in Revelation this, this church that's kind of just dull, doesn't mean we have to stay dull. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Exactly. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. And I think this whole idea of the river. I've heard this thing, now I'm hearing it being preached on TV all of a sudden. <laughs> and after the fact, I mean, this is all after everything has been going on here. So it's another confirmation on top of a confirmation on top of a confirmation. So now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen? Now that's the challenge for everybody. For all of us, amen? See, we, we, we've got a right to know the things that are freely given to us through the redemptive work of Christ. That's the mind of Christ. Yeah. That's exact knowledge. That's God knowledge. That's perfect wisdom. You don't get wisdom from, from a book. Amen? Wisdom comes by the Spirit, true wisdom. You can get smarter and smarter and still be useless with all your knowledge. And on the other hand, you can have an IQ of three, but if the Spirit moves to give you wisdom, there's no limit. I remember, you know, Smith Wigglesworth was illiterate. He was a plumber. And God used this guy in the Spirit in ways that we only pray for and dream about. That was a hundred years ago now. Yeah. And God hasn't changed. God wants to do greater things today. I'm not saying we're going to repeat Smith Wigglesworth. I'm saying we should just go off of his shoulders, amen, to the next thing. Yeah. Amen? So uh, let's look at Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10. This is the idea. I mean, this is part of the reason I think that God gives us grace and has had us, you know, 
studying grace, preaching about grace, confessing grace, and so on and so forth, is because without grace, you can't, you'll never get to this. That's right. Because we'll always see ourselves as, well, I'm not Smith Wigglesworth after all, or I'm not, you know, Come on. Mother Teresa or whatever. Right. No, you don't. These people in Colossus were not either. But Paul prayed for something that they were that was obtainable to them, right. and that was full knowledge, so that they could walk in all the fruit, right. amen, so that they could bear fruit, you know, just like we were talking about the river and the trees that bear fruit, yeah. and uh, the, the leaves are for healing, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. So all of this is part and parcel of what the Spirit is saying. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We are renewed in knowledge after the image of God. Yeah. Not that I'm going to look like God, but my mind will think the way God thinks. Yeah. My mind will have the same ability, amen, uh, to know what God knows. Yeah. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14. It's attainable. It's ours. Yeah. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. I'll just leave that up there for a moment, Roberto. But that's exactly what, uh, in my mind, what Mike was saying a week ago Friday. Amen? He, just, he was just paraphrasing this. I don't know that he necessarily intended to say this, but this is what he was saying. He was, you know, I mean, I know what he meant to say is what he said, but he may not have been trying to quote this, but this is biblical, and that's what I've said before. We don't always know, have the scripture wrapped up in our brain and say, go to this book and this verse and so on and so forth, but yet we speak the wisdom of God. We still speak in agreement with that word. Mm -hmm. Sheila texted me the other day uh, and about this I won't go into all of it, but this woman that she's asked for prayer for that she talked about working, doing some work for her and sharing some things with her. Well, you know, I know Sheila didn't get up that morning and go through the scripture and try to pick out a particular verse and a book and then go to another one and get another one and then write all these down and then walk in there and start reading this off. She went in there to clean the lady's house, but with the idea that I'm here for another reason. I mean, I'm going to clean the house. That's what she pays me for. But my job, my calling is to be Christ for this woman. And so God gives her, sets the situation up for Sheila just to speak right out of her own spirit what this woman can relate to. Now, that's Holy Ghost. You can't prepare for that. You know what I'm saying? You just go and you, you're a little uptight thinking, you know, geez, I hope I can say something that's going to be helpful and so on and so forth. Look, you're going to. Yeah. If, you, if you depend on the Lord. Amen. Because it's God speaking through you. He wants to speak to that woman more than we ever could want to, even though we feel compassion for him. That's God's child, you know. That's what's amazing to me. And that's all of us have this if we're believers. And that's what he's talking about. The natural man doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're not, but they're foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And that doesn't come through your senses. It doesn't come through your intellect. Right. It comes through your spirit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a theology uh, professor. You don't have to have a degree. You don't have to be a Bible college graduate. You don't even have to have a full knowledge of the Bible. If you have the Spirit of God, He could quicken things to you that you don't even know what they've meant. But as you're speaking them, you're getting revelation the same time you're releasing revelation. Amen? That's what the Spirit of God does. But we've got to depend on Him to do it. You can't prepare for that. I'm not saying don't read the Bible. We should read the Bible. You should take you know the time to read it. But you're never going to be able to glean enough just from the words off the face of the page. Without the Spirit, it's just law. It's just rules. Right. Amen? Amen? And the same way with our worship. Without the Spirit of God, it's just entertainment. That's right. I mean, it's just music. And you can go anywhere for music, 
But you can't go just anywhere and feel the presence of the Lord. Now, that's something we've been blessed with. Because even with a handful of people, people come here and say, I just felt the presence of the Lord. People have pulled up out front. We've got people coming here right now who just pulled up out front and said, I just felt like the Lord is telling me this is where you need to go. Now, you don't just drive by this church and go, wow, that's where I want to go. You know, I'm not putting it down. It's a nice building. I'm, I'm grateful for it and all that. It's enough to be ashamed of. But it's not a mega church. It's not something that's going to, you know, reach out and grab people off the street by just the look of it, you know. And likewise, people come in and we're a handful of people. That's a turnoff. People want to go where other people are because they feel like that's a successful place. That's just common sense. That's like a business or anything else. Amen. You pull up to a restaurant and there's no cars there. You don't go, whoopee, no waiting. You usually go, I don't know, I wonder what's wrong here. The health department been by here recently or something? And Praise the Lord. So, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And this is my 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 sense of it, is that God, as we have said all along, is preparing us, but he's not preparing us to make us smarter, not to make us uh, more, uh, you know, business-minded, although there's nothing wrong with that, but he's preparing us to operate by the Spirit, because he wants to do this, amen? He just needs people that will listen, people that will receive the full knowledge of God so that when we speak, we're speaking for God. God is literally speaking through us. We're not just giving our opinion of something. We're not just giving our denominational spin of it or our creed or whatever, but we're actually allowing the Holy Spirit to speak the full truth, the exact truth, the precise mind of God. Does that sound arrogant and uh, you know puffed up to say that? From a religious perspective, I suppose it does, but after all, that's exactly what Paul prayed that we would do because it's the only way things really change it's the only way you get people to Jesus you can get people into a denomination by giving them the de denominational information the doctrines, the, the creeds, the rituals and so on and so forth but that doesn't, get, that doesn't necessarily put them in a relationship with Jesus we've got a lot of people in churches today that don't have a relationship with Christ they belong to an organization and they make professions, but they really have no intimacy with God. And that's the, that's the sad part, amen, of, of the ignorance of the church or the, this foolishness, if you will, uh, of the church. Amen? Now, remember in uh, Colossians uh, chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, about this knowledge, this precise knowledge, this full knowledge. Everybody who wants this exact knowledge can have it. Say, I want it. All right, you can have it, praise the Lord, according to the Word of God. Amen. You don't have to work, 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 work to get it. You just got to want it. And the way God knows that you want it is by willing to step out and do it. Amen. You got to overcome the fear factor. I'm going to look like a fool. I'm going to you know, get tongue-tied. I'll be stupid. I won't know what to do. Just trust the Lord. Amen? All right, look, look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. Every, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody, right? Everybody. So every one of us has the grace to enter into all the riches of the inheritance. Now, the things are great, and that's part of it. But they are the periphery. They are the, the side effects or the afterthought. The inheritance is to be one with God. That's the riches of this thing. That is the, every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ, which is reconciliation to God in order to be one with God again, in order to walk in that complete knowledge. Amen? It doesn't take away from the blessing of financial you know, breakthrough and healing and all the rest of that, 
But those things are added as a result of this knowledge, of this exact knowledge. Without exact knowledge, you don't get in anything. If you don't know that you have it, you're not ever going to expect it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So look at uh, in John 1, uh, verse 16, he says, you don't have to go there, but he says, Of his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace, or grace for grace. Mm -hmm. Of his fullness yes. have all we received, and grace upon grace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, you know, in... Uh, Ezekiel chapter 40, and that's where this whole thing about the river comes from. It says that there is a, you know, he has a vision. Ezekiel has his vision. And a, and a man shows up. That guy's God. If you go back, you'll see that that is a manifestation of God. And he is measuring a thousand cubits, a thousand cubits, you know, ankle, a thousand cubits, knees, a thousand cubits, waist, a thousand cubits, Deep, too deep to do anything other than to swim in. Amen. So God measures our willingness to walk by the Spirit. This was a vision that He had. Amen. And notice that every time we do it, He gives us more. Every time we step out in faith, take the next thousand feet, yep. cubits, whatever, he gives you a deeper experience and a deeper experience and a deeper experience and until everything is spirit. It's waters to swim in. You're not doing anything anymore but just going with the flow. You're just staying in the, in the water. Amen. So every time he measures, he increases. Every time we step out, there's a measurement. Yep. Every time we do it, there's an increase. Amen. Increased anointing, increased uh, awareness, increased uh, spirit, power. I'm talking about, you know, the empowering. Yes. That's, what this is, that's what this is all about. Every time, until it becomes all spirit, until we are empowered Fully by the Spirit, without measure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Amen? The full knowledge, the fullness of God. Yes. Amen? Okay. See, the battle is between the river and your senses. Right. Between mentality and the river. Mm -hmm. Between the Spirit and the senses. It's always what it's been. It's what it always will be. Yep. And that's what God's trying to get us to understand. If you'll take a step of faith, that's spirit. That, that's having to move by the spirit. Yes. I'll give you greater. I'll increase. And if you continue it, you'll get to the place where it's all spirit. So don't despise the day of small beginnings. Right. Don't be upset that we don't exactly know how to do this worship thing or we don't know how to do this uh, preaching thing or this witnessing thing, this ministry. Because yeah. that's all any of it is. That's what all of it is if we're doing it right, if we're doing it by the Spirit. Right. So don't be awkward. Right. Just flat, you know, hey, look, just get out there in the ankle deep. And keep moving. Pretty soon it'll be knee deep, then it'll be waist deep, and then it'll be, woo, baby. Then it'll just be whatever God wants to do, God will be doing it. Amen. And we're not stressing out, freaking out, bummed out. We're just flowing, watching the bubbles pop. We're just doing the Don Ho thing. Tiny bubbles. Oh, yeah. I love all these analogies because they're so... Godlike, and they so connect. And then you know, then Sheila goes out and just puts it on the pavement. You know, I mean, just takes it to the street, so to speak. Just does it. Just does exactly what the Holy Spirit is saying. Not that this is the first time she's ever done it, but I'm saying we're having an awareness now yes. of what's happening. We just didn't. She didn't just get lucky. 
you know, and, and, and the right thing came out of her mouth. No. She's got God in her. And when she lets God, God comes out of her mouth. That's exactly what God wants to do. You know, we've, we've locked Christ up in our creeds. We've locked him up in our denominations so that he's no bigger than they will allow him to be. Praise the Lord. And so it's made it impossible for him to help people beyond the limit of our doctrines and our creeds and our own understanding. He said, you've limited God, imagine, by your traditions. And we still do. We've been doing this. That's what the church has done. Our past experiences that our senses tell us are true are the facts instead of what we know the Spirit says. So it limits what God does because our knowledge is not exact because it's not precise because it's not complete. And that's why Paul prayed the prayer. Because with complete knowledge, with exact knowledge, with precise knowledge, bang, all of a sudden, it's God. It's God knowledge. It's God's words. It's God's timing. It's God's uh, foreknowledge of that individual and what they need to hear. Because what they need to hear is not what the neighbor needs to hear. They need to know the same Jesus. They need to know the same reality. But they need to hear it in a different way. Because the Spirit knows what they can connect to and what they won't connect to. Amen? You're not going to talk to a person with a Ph.D., you know what I'm saying, the same way you're going to talk to somebody who's uh, running a hog farm. Not that one is better than the other. You understand what I'm saying? But they're not going to relate. That's why Jesus was able to relate to people. And he said himself, it's just, it's just God speaking here. Praise the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now look, look at that again. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So, obviously what he's saying without any huge, uh, you know, revelation here is that grace and peace is multiplied in the exact, perfect knowledge of God and mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. You want to walk in the fullness of grace. You want to be at peace in every situation. It's multiplied yes. through this exact knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you have the mind of Christ, Fox News is not going to make you nervous. Right. CNN won't bug you. Right. The neighbor won't flip you out. Mm -hmm. Amen. The doctor's report won't panic you. Right. The bank statement is not going to cause you to go into hysterics. Right. You're going to be at peace. Because you know his grace is sufficient. You know. You know the perfect mind of God. He's going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. It's going to get taken care of. It's going to be all right for you. It may not be all right for everybody else, but it's going to be all right for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at verse 3. Next verse down. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Now something I just heard, I, I'm going to repeat this only because I just heard it and it fits with this whole idea. But you know, when that river comes out, it comes out of the throne, says it goes to the south, which would be to the right, out from under the throne, which is the place of righteousness, the place of priority, Amen. God's priority, your righteousness. And then it goes east. 
Now, east, according to Isaiah, is the glory of God. His power comes from out of the west, his glory from the east. If you want to experience all of the glory, amen, amen you need to be in the river. Because yep. that's where he gets all the glory. Mm -hmm. It's not us. It's not somebody's ministry. Yep. It's God. Yep. Amen. He's called us to glory and virtue or glory and righteousness. But it's not my glory or my righteousness. Come on. It comes from him. He deserves it. And when he, when we're in that river, his glory will fill yeah. or cover the earth the way the water covers the sea because he's the one being identified by it. You're speaking God's words, not your words anymore. It's not now what I think I can do in this situation to make it better. It's simply God just speaking right through me. We know it. They know it. And God knows it. They, they might not know it at first, but they, it won't take them long to figure it out. Amen. All they got, I mean, you know, I've had conversations with people and, and they go, wow, I never thought of that. And then we're just having another conversation at another time that has nothing to do with God or anything else. And they're thinking, geez, I didn't realize you were as stupid as you are. <laughs> I mean, you seemed like the other day we were talking, you were like you really had it together. But obviously you're not that bright. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> and I go, yeah, that's right. That's right dumber than a brick. I'm so dumb, I'm happy, praise the Lord, because it's God. We, that way I don't, we don't get the credit for it. It's the same way with healing. See, we've, we've tried to rob God. Yeah. And not just of tithes and offerings. We've, we, we're robbing him of the glory yeah. by my healing ministry, you know, or my whatever. Right. It's his. It's all about him. Amen? Amen. See, the church has been governed by sense, knowledge, philosophy. And we call it religion, or we call it lots of things, but that's what it basically is. It's sense, knowledge, philosophy. Because the truth is, 90 I, I'm not going to say percentages, but a huge number, just in my own personal experience, have a philosophical redemption. They've got a philosophical new birth. A philosophical relationship with God as Father. Yeah. But nothing personal in it. Right. Nothing spiritual. Mm. They can tell you what you got to do to do it, right. you know. But it's philosophy. Wow. Yeah. It's not spirit. Yeah. Just not many Christians are conscious of God in their body. That's what I mean by making it philosophical. It's not real. It's not spiritual. Because we're for the most part just not aware, just not conscious that God's in me. It's God that's in me. People are always, you know, I mean they're always talking about their lack of power. Yeah. Lack of ability. That in itself tells you they're not aware of God in them. I heard Seinfeld say the other day, he's a very spiritual person. <laughs> he said the number one thing people fear is public speaking. Number one. Number two is death. Now think about this. If that's true, and according to the statistics it is, then the guy in the coffin is better off than the guy giving the eulogy. <laughs> but that's, that's us in a lot of ways. Because we're too outside-minded and not enough God inside-minded. If we really knew God is in me, yep. neither one would frighten us. Mm -hmm. yep. That's why Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. I told you Seinfeld was smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I like to give him credit. I mean, maybe. Who knows? But you, you understand what I'm saying? We. 
we're so conscious of lack of our inabilities, of our, you know, lack of whatever, that we forget God's in here. He can do anything. There's no limits. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, uh, verses 19 and 20. And we'll wrap up here. Praise the Lord. Just remember, exact knowledge, full knowledge, precise knowledge, and you can have it. If you could not have it, the Spirit would not have moved on Paul to pray that prayer, and it would have been totally outrageous for Paul to pray something that wasn't possible for them to have. Right. When they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. Yeah. We could say that here in worship. I'm not saying don't read the Bible, don't, you know, don't ever prepare it, but I'm saying when you're, when you're in a position that, that, that you're fearful of what to say or how to say it or when to say it, or if you're just in a position where you want a move of God, mm-hmm. here's the answer. Take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. In other words, you'll get the exact knowledge of God for that moment, for that crowd, for that person, for that situation, amen, what you need to say. Because it's not you that's going to say it. But the Spirit of God which speaketh in you. That's another reminder of the God that's in us. This is His agenda. This is his plan. Amen? He will speak through our lips. Amen? That's what Jesus said. The words that I speak, it's not me. It's the Father that's in me. I only say what I hear my Father say. So it's just how seldom we let him loose in us is the problem. We don't give him freedom. The Holy Spirit, you know, he come to set us free. He sets us free and we lock him up. You know, we, we hinder what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Right. The Holy Spirit is to speak in you. That means he's to take you over, just like when you spoke in tongues. If you receive baptism of the Holy Spirit as evidenced by speaking in tongues, if you haven't, you should speak in tongues. Just saying. But if you speak in tongues, then you already know what I'm talking about. You had to shut up. Amen? I mean, you still had to let it come out, but it wasn't you thinking in your head, well, it's going to sound like this. Right. Como se llama? <laughs> Peter, come and see here. Faster, slows. No. It, it, you just let it go. You let it come out and didn't care if it sounded like a complete blabbering idiot, a three-year-old. You didn't care. You just went with the flow. You went with the unction. The spirit gives the unction, and you just. Whatever it was. That doesn't matter what it was. It was the Holy Spirit speaking through you. It was your mouth. It was your tongue. It was your vocal cord. But it was the Holy Spirit speaking to God. Back to himself. Amen. Now that's what we need to be doing. The same thing we did. That's, I think that's what that's about more than anything else is to get us to understand that it's not us. It's God in us. And if you're inhibited or intimidated by what others will think, you'll never speak in tongues. Not in front of anybody else anyway. Because you've got to overcome your own self. Because you know it. In the natural, it sounds like an idiot. Now, this is just stupid. And your mind will tell you, that's just you. That's just you blabbering. Yeah. It's my mouth. It's my, my, 
lips is my tongue, and I can hear it. It sounds like my voice, but that is the Holy Spirit speaking through you. Come on. you that's all there is to it. You just trust that it is. It's an act of faith like anything else. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. For it's not ye that speak, but it's the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me ask you something. We, we, you know, we see, and you read about it all the time, it's on television, and there's 900 numbers for it, or some hundred number anyway. Psychics. How about uh, mediums, spiritualists, who yield themselves to unclean spirits? And they do, and they actually say things and tell things that are, you know, weird, strange. Amen? Why can't we be taken over by the Holy Spirit? If they can be moved on and used as a vehicle through which a demon can speak, and we know it happens, there's right. possessions, there's, there's things like that all the time. Right. If they can do it, why don't we? Come on now. Why can't we believe the same thing for us from the Holy Ghost that they believe for from some devil? So that God will speak through us an unadulterated message, exact, precise, complete, God knowledge. Amen. Last scripture, and we'll close with this. First John chapter 4. First John 4, uh, 4 through 6. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. Because, you know, that's what we're doing. Sheila was a medium for God. Yeah. That's all it is. It's a means by which that spirit can come to this dimension. Thank God for Sheila. It was the Holy Spirit. But there's plenty of people out there that are messing with the other ones. Some knowingly and others just out of ignorance. But nevertheless, that's what's happening. They're giving themselves over to another mind the God of this world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. The Spirit. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Amen. So in other words, the only way you can really know is by the spirit. Right. You, your, your intellect will never be precise enough. It will never be accurate enough for you to be able to discern between truth and falseness. Right. I mean, how, if you ever, you hear somebody and you think, wow, they... They really got it together. They're really bright. And then you get in their presence and you just feel uncomfortable as all get out. Mm -hmm. You're just like something isn't right here. The spirit. There's, there's truth and then there's precise. Or I should say there's knowledge and then there's precise knowledge. Yeah. Amen. Accurate knowledge complete knowledge, God knowledge. And that's what he's talking about. The world doesn't get it. It doesn't click. Just like that knowledge doesn't click with us. I hear about people doing things and saying things, and I think, I, I, don't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't figure this out. How can they think that way? How can they think that that's right or that's okay or that's the way it ought to be? Some of them are religious people. Because they've just got some knowledge that the world and they relate to. Amen? That's why you've got churches that are, I mean, you can't tell the difference. I'm not talking about the way they dress or 
if they ever swear or if they ever have a beer or drink a glass of wine. I'm talking about their, their whole system is based on human world knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's no spirit leading. Right. There's no Holy Ghost uh, direction. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's no power. Right. Now, they may have things that the world is attracted to. Right. Self-help program. Big, beautiful building. System programs. But in all of that seeking after, what they really want is the spirit. Right. And we're the only ones that can give it to them. And the only way we can give it to them is through this exact, precise, complete knowledge. And that only comes by wading out into the river. Amen. By allowing God to speak through us instead of us trying to rationalize everything and figure it all out. Right. Just be led by the Spirit. Amen. And trust that God is in you to speak through you operate through you. Amen? Does that make sense to anybody here tonight? Praise the Lord. You see, we can do it. You can have that knowledge because it isn't sense knowledge. It's just a release. It's the idea of being in waters to swim in. It's just getting to the place where it's no more you resisting the river. You know, try to stand up in a flowing river, whether it's behind you or coming at you. You know, it's difficult. Get into where the Water's deep enough to swim in. Most of the time, you don't even notice the current right. until you're three miles down the stream. Praise <laughs> the Lord. But you know what I'm saying? That's what he's telling us. Get there. Get, get into the deep mm -hmm. where it's me, Amen. where it's all God, and not part God and part me. Amen. That's where the church has been pretty much, somewhere out there between the ankles and the knees or the waist never willing to completely give themselves over mm -hmm. to all of God, to the fullness and to the complete knowledge of God, which is just total spirit. It sounds scary. It sounds flaky. But see, half of the flake stuff that we've had is people trying to pretend that they're swimming. Right. Amen? I can tell you a story. One time right after I got back from Vietnam, my younger brother and I did some mescaline decided we were going to raft down the Skunk River. After about two and a half hours looking at the same bridge, seemingly not to come any closer, we realized we were sitting on the bottom of the river. It was about this deep. We thought we were on the journey of a lifetime. We believed white water any moment. Well, it sounds stupid, but of course, we had a little help with that stupid, but that's kind of the way we do church. Yeah. We're out there flailing around like, whoa, look out. No, oh, Nellie, here we go. And we're about this deep. And it's more about us and our ignorance than it is about God. I'm not saying don't worship. I'm not, you know, you understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying a lot of what we've seen is not a move of God. It's just a move of flesh. God doesn't belittle us for that or humiliate us for that, but he wants us to realize there's a place that's so deep you don't need any human effort. You just flop in there and God takes over. Yep. People get healed. People get delivered. You get revelation. You have God experiences that cannot be duplicated, that can't be replicated, that some man can't give you. You only get it by being there with God in that place fullness, Amen. exact knowledge, spirit, complete spirit. Amen? Amen. And you can have it. Amen. Or the Bible wouldn't tell us. Right. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I got a good rap. It's only been used once if anybody would like to use it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You'd have to pray the spirits out of it, but then other than that, it's fine. That was a long time ago, about 1960-something. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I've fully recovered. What was that? <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> right now.
now John is having a flashback. Praise God. <laughs> John said, I think I was in that river. I remember that river.